Welcome to Faith Works, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kao Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. It gives light and understanding to the simple. We come before you in all simplicity. We ask that you use your word to give us light, to give us direction, to strengthen our faith, to heal, to grant peace in our heart, to sanctify us, to edify us, and make us be more like you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And all the saints say, Amen. 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 The subject of faith is what we cannot get tired of hearing. Hebrews 11, 6 says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. That they who come to God must believe that he is what he says he is, and a reward of them that diligently seek him. The Bible says, by faith, the worlds were created by God. What makes God, what made him create the entire universe is faith. And the Bible says, to God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, sorry, nothing shall be impossible. Then the Bible says, all things are possible to him who believeth. So faith is what puts you on the same operational capacity with God. With God. When you walk by faith, you're on the same operational capacity with God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, Mark 11. I call it the, there are some faith scriptures that are unique, but I call it the grandfather the granddaddy of the expression of the God kind of faith is one of the greatest secrets that has been given by the divine to humanity. Um, if you go to companies, they have what they call trade secrets. Even when you watch Geographical Channel and you're watching maybe, um, what's this topic they call it? Mega factories. They tell you that we've gotten to a point that they will no longer allow us to see what is going on. We call it the trade secrets. They're trying to preserve something. They don't want you to know. But God said, you can have my trade secrets. This is how I got the job done. If you can operate it this same way, you too will get the job done. That was how Jesus got the job done. That was how the Father got the job done. And it works. If you know how to operate it, which is what we want to look at this morning, the God kind of faith, how God gets the job done, then you too can and will get the job done. Mark 11 from verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. Jesus answered and said to the tree, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Then I jump to verse 20. In the morning as they passed by of your sleep, when he spoke to the tree, nothing looked like as happened. And everything looked like nothing has happened. But I want to tell you, each time you make that statement of faith, something happens. Something happens. You just aren't saying it, but something is happening. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. It could have been two weeks later. It could have been a month later. It could have been a year later. But it will dry up. Take it from me. It will dry up. That's what the God kind of faith is. It will dry up. And if it was positive, that's how they would have seen it. Now in the morning they passed by, they saw the fig tree dry up from the roots. Peter called it to remembrance, said to him, Master, the fig tree you cursed, it has withered. Jesus said to him, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. Now what is 
The God kind of faith. Since the introduction was an utterance, that means the God kind of faith, you can't separate speaking. The God kind of faith does not wish. It does not murmur. It speaks. It opens its mouth and it speaks. No wonder they said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, check it, the beginning of creation to the end of Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, and whatever God said, God got not what he wished. God got what he said. God got what he said. And the God kind of faith starts with speaking. Twenty-three. Verily I say unto you, whosoever, now is open it up, anyone who can do this, what are you supposed to do? Whosoever will say to this mountain. Now, I'm wondering, why did he use mountain to express the God kind of faith? No one ever moved a mountain before. I don't know how great the technology of the European Union Russia, China, and the U.S. combined together can move Mount Everest. I don't know in one piece. I'm not saying break it down. That means move Mount Everest from the chunk below, lift it in the air, and go and place it in the Pacific Ocean. I don't know what technology they have to do that. But then, 4, 000, that's 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, if you have the God kind of faith, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea as one lump, not broken down, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe what he says, he shall, sorry, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, let me paraphrase it, when you say it, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. I'll stop there. The God kind of faith proceeds, because he went on in verse 24 to say, therefore, but I'll leave the therefore of the next things he said. That's 25. From 25, I'll leave that. I'll stop at 24 for now. So he's saying, when you approach a situation that is far beyond any known solution. Address it with words. The God kind of faith address quagma and absolutely impossible circumstances with words. But when God speaks, he does not doubt in his heart whatsoever he says. Whatever God says, God believes it will come to pass, and it comes to pass. So that's the secret of the God. Can, God just exposed all his traits. It's like coming to invest in a country, and, you know, when they started pushing out to mobile Nigeria before the other time, they will make the engine in France, then bring then couple it here. Here, they're making everything from scratch, telling you this is the beginning and the end of it. There is called technology transfer. That's what God is doing. Say, you can be just like me. You can operate just like me. And that's how I want you to operate. Amen? Amen. Now, in 2 Corinthians 4.13, it says, We also have the same spirit of faith as it is written, I have believed, therefore I speak. I also believe and therefore speak. So, there is no separation of faith from words. Now, if faith, and the first encounter of faith is words. Then it's very important we must know how the words of faith is channeled. French has a language. Spanish, some of you speak French. Some of you speak German. Guten Morgen. Good morning. Guten Abend. Good evening. You know, the German members will just say, come for a holiday. For saying that, they don't know all I can say in German. It's just good morning and good evening. Praise God. <laughs> Do you know in the kingdom of God, words are more important than deeds? Now, I remember in Luke 23, there were two thieves, one at the right hand of Jesus and one at the left hand. These are murderers. These are thieves, armed robbers that have killed people. Where did they deserve to be? Hell fire. 
And one said, if you claim to be the son of God, jump down, set yourself loose, and set us loose. We'll follow you in any form of banditry. Anything will we'll be with you. And the other said, don't you fear God. He said, this man, he's done nothing wrong. We have done something wrong. We have been punished for us. He said, Lord, remember me in thy kingdom. He said, tonight, 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 thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's why I admire People, Kali Hoshanda said, tonight, what about the robberies? Tonight, what about the murders? Tonight, you'll be in heaven. How do we get saved? By doing good works? No. By morally sound? No. How? By accepting Jesus as the only begotten Son of God and confessing him and making him our Lord and Savior. How do you make heaven? Through words. How do you go to hell? By rejecting Jesus through words. So there's French language. And you see that thief make heaven just because he spoke the right words at the right time. English is a language. Spanish is a language. Faith has a language. And if you are addressing the mountain, in the, if, you, if, you go to, if you go to France and... Some of them hear English, but they pretend like they don't hear English. Sorry, I, I'm just saying what somebody said. I'm not trying to run them down, praise God. And you say, um, e say, um, say, e wo e ke fumi ni ti. They say, um, excuse, no, no, sorry, let's say English because I don't know French. They say, excuse me, what did you just say? Now you have your money, you want a tea in a cafe, but they don't understand what you are saying. That mountain will not respond because it does not understand what you are saying. Faith has a language, and the mountains, the sea. And that's why the sun stood still when Joshua gave it a command. They have a language that they respond to. It's a language of faith, and you must understand it. When you speak that language, when you get to England, you speak English, they will understand you. They will address you well. When you go to Spain, you speak Spanish. It will be easier to get along. When you go to Brazil, you speak Brazilian language. It will be easier to get along. When you go to the north, you speak out there. It will be easier. But if you go to the north and you speak Spanish... He says, so, uh, waiting. What's going on? You'll be, they'll be wondering. What you're saying is so simple. It's what they want to do for you, but they cannot do because they don't understand what you're saying. So faith has a language. not enough to speak to the mountain. You must know how to navigate those speeches. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Romans 10, Romans chapter 10, I read verse 6, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on these wise. That means it has a way it speaks. It has a way it speaks. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend? So it doesn't speak on this wise, but it says the word is near thee, even in your mouth, in your heart, which is the word of faith which we preach in Matthew 6, the Lord was saying, he said, take no thought for your life, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Faith does not speak like that. So after you're given to the mountain, you must say, how, how is it going to move? How, how is it going to move? The mountain will reject that statement. It will not move. But if you speak right, it will move. If Jesus said it will move, it will move. Amen. Amen. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. We want to learn the language of the God kind of faith. The language of the God kind of faith, number one. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 2. It says that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And God said, 
let there be light. And there was light. So we say number one, you say what you want. Number two, in 1 Samuel 17, David was facing Goliath. And in that encounter, David was the, um, what do I call the um, underdog? Is it underdog we call it? When um, two nations, well, they say football, there's no underdog now, right? It was before there was underdog, but no more underdog. And they're just getting to understand spiritual things. That in life, there's no underdog anywhere. Praise God. And so in that encounter, for Samuel 17, from verse 38, there was a trading of words between David and Goliath. Goliath was more armed. David was less armed. But who wins is who speaks the language of faith. For the God kind of faith has never been defeated. Never, never, ever. And can never, never, ever be defeated. David went before Goliath. And the first thing Goliath said when in verse 42 he disdained him. And looked at him and said to him, verse 43, Am I a dog that you come to me with staves? And Philistine cursed David by his gods. He was not operating the God kind of faith, which is what many people are doing now. He was cursing David. He said, Am I a dog? How did he come to ask him whether you're a dog? Yeah, probably you are. But the God kind of faith. Did you notice the speech? Goliath was trusting in his armor. But he brought the wrong speech. Am I a dog that you come with me with these and these and these? David said to the Philistine, verse 45, You come against me with a sword and a spear, with a sheep, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies whom you have defiled. This day, if he didn't say this day, the war might have gone to the next day. He said, This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will smite thee. I will take off your head from thee. I will give your carcass to the host of the Philistine. This day, to the fowls of the air to the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth will know today that there's a God in Israel. The battle was won and lost. It had nothing to do with what you are carrying. We just measure your speech and we know who has won and who has lost. One says, I reject it in Jesus' name. That's a lost battle. This is how this issue will end. That is a won battle. The God kind of faith Speaks in this wise. You saw how Goliath was speaking? You saw what David was saying? Goliath focused his speech on the disdain from David. Am I a dog? He didn't say what he wanted. In John 11, I'm trying to show you how the God kind of faith talks, which is how God talks. Amen? In that John 11, they asked Jesus, Lazarus is sick unto death. And immediately Jesus said, this sickness will not result to death, but for the glory of God. He said two things. One came to pass, one failed. This sickness will not result to death. That is not the God kind of faith. But... In this sickness, God will be glorified. That is the God kind of faith. I'm trying to let you see what the God kind of faith is. He said, this sickness will not, that's not what you want. You want the sickness to go. If the sickness does not result to death, he can still remain sick. We want you healed. Right? We want you healed. Now, if you're sick, I can say, I command whatever sickness in your body, I charge you to be healed in the name of Jesus. It's different from that sickness you are carrying. It won't kill you. No. That is not the God kind of faith. That failed because Lazarus died. It was spoken by Jesus. And I guess he's trying to make us understand that, look, even Jesus, when he does not say the God kind of faith can fail, but when he says the God kind of faith, it will not fail. This sickness will not kill Lazarus. That is not the God kind of faith. Is that what you want? If he doesn't kill him and he still remains sick, is God glorified? No. He said God will be glorified in this circumstance. Now that happened. Because when he got to the tomb, 
in verse um, 39 to 40. And he said, roll away the stone. He said, by now, he's thinking. He didn't say, don't worry, you smell the stench again. A man can still die and you smell the stench. No. He said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. I would rather you spend three hours preparing what to say in one minute and get it right than you speak for 30 minutes and trying to correct it. The moment Jesus said it will not lead to death, which was not the God kind of faith, death took Lazarus straight away because it's only the God kind of faith that is guaranteed to triumph. Amen. Amen. Are you seeing technicalities in speech? Are you seeing technicalities in speech? That's why when it comes to faith, it's for the enlightened. Only the enlightened people can walk by faith. You don't have to be educated to be enlightened. You can be educated and not enlightened. How would you see people wear suits, walk in banks, they drive one way, I don't want enlightened. No, probably a master's degree. You see people with master's degree enter one way, say, hey, move, move, move. They are not enlightened. They are darkened, but they have a master's degree. Education does not solve poverty. Enlightenment solves poverty. It's enlightenment that gives inspiration for entrepreneurship, for inspiration to create and build and solve crisis. It's not education. Education is a platform. For you to be inspired, it doesn't guarantee inspiration, but it helps you to be inspired. That's why you see people can cram notes and go to school and cram it and have a 2-1 and can't do anything. But you will be inspired, you will be enlightened, Amen. you walk in the light, Amen. you walk by faith. Amen. I declare the end of all crisis, limiting your progress in life. Today, in the name of Jesus, I declare according to the God kind of faith, an end has come to everything that has made you less what God called you to be. In the name of Jesus, from this day, I charge your spirit to move forward in life, move forward spiritually, emotionally, materially, physically, in the name of Jesus. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.